we're back and I have my little buddy with me again and he's coming along pretty well he's starting to settle in I think that many times you'll end up with horses that are athletic and along with that comes a, a great deal of energy and curiosity and that's actually a good thing if you know what to do with it now there are certain instances where this one can be a little bit overly sensitive to girth or, or things near his flank, things near his hindquarters. And I'd like to show you some ways to work with, work with him and see if we can get him less sensitive to things around his flank and girth. So let's get started. For me, it's in the little things and it might start with just brushing and not brushing him in the cross ties, but brushing him in the arena where I'm able to influence his position. I can support an idea or discourage an idea. Maybe I'll cause him to think about me a little bit more. Right there, it seems to feel good. I think he wanted it on his neck. And I take note as I've brushed down towards his flank, I take note, look at his face. I tend to have soft eyes, open field of vision, field of view. So if I'm brushing his flank, I'm, I'm not just looking at his flank, but I'm aware of the whole horse, including his head and neck. Supporting the idea of nose between the shoulder and keeping your head up. This is looking okay. He looks to the outside. Maybe I make it more interesting. I might stand up, lead forward, and possibly tap with the curry comb where your leg would be. It's not any worse than somebody using their spur. And then when I bring my posture down, he halts. Now, I realize that I talk about this a lot, this idea of bringing the horse's life up, directing it, and then bringing it back down being able to bring his life down equally as well as we can bring it up. I don't want to have an imbalance there. There's some horses that have uh, so much life, people aren't able to get that horse to bring their life down and that becomes a problem. Then you've got the other case where horses just aren't able to get their feet moving and get forward and free up for the person, for the human. This is looking pretty good. Being able to brush him standing still, being able to brush him on the move, I'll just help him a little bit there. The tail swishing is definitely telling me there's some sensitivity. He's flinching less than he used to. I'll see if I can help him get that forehand over. I'm just gonna hang in there a little bit till we get that. That's good. We'll see if we can just keep, keep his nose straight, attention is on. See if we can walk, keep walking, and keep brushing. So I call that brushing on the move. So anything that your leg would do or that your body would do, we want to do on the ground. So he understands the human. The human's the same. I'm the same person down here as I'll be when I'm on his back. If I stand tall, or sit tall in the saddle, we'd like him to get moving. And if I relax and settle in, maybe we come down to a, to a halt. Some horses get stuck in the feet. It's a nervous, they're nervous inside, but on the outside, their feet get jammed up or stuck. And a flinchy horse oftentimes isn't very free moving in their feet anyway at least while they're flinching. And so with that in mind, walking forward while we're brushing, it's pretty important. Now this grooming for me is <laughs> more a mental exercise, setting the stage for what's coming later, maybe even a little bit of a pattern, patterning a little bit of a behavior of, of coming with me, coming forward, stopping when I stop, it's just as much a mental exercise as it is to trying to get the long hair off and the mud off of him. In fact, 
I don't know that there's a time that I wouldn't be mindful of the horse if I'm in his, if I'm in his, you know, with him. We'll get this other side. The flinching, a little better. Tail swishing, it's okay. We'll take and take a hard brush. Give that a try. He's really a nice horse and he, he is curious. And that's great. Curiosities, you need to have this. Now, as I turn towards him, notice I keep my life up and I might brush with his life up and then let him settle to a halt. I'm always able to bend his nose towards me. If his nose is able to come to me, the thought of, of you know, kicking out or something probably won't be there. At least it won't be directed at me. Always able to get to the horse's head and neck when I'm at his side. That's looking all right. Does he want me to brush his forehead a little bit? And we'll read his expression and brush his neck. He, of course, he wants to look away right now. Good, I brought him back to me. Came back to. Trying to also instill a sense of relax with me. Now's your chance to, to relax. Let's get forward. Up we go, forward, good. Bring him to me. Posture comes down, my arms come to my side. I might get a little slightly slouchy, so does he. You can look at me, you can look at me, you can bring your head towards me, but don't touch me. You might you might smell me now, but I don't want you to bring your head towards me in such a way that you're in my space. That's looking pretty good. It's looking okay. Some tail swishing still, especially when I ask for forward. And then he sort of started to wring his tail a little bit more, but maybe I keep brushing now until I see that tail start to settle to a halt. He's still swishing it, right? But I'll just keep brushing. Good. When I walk, he's walking. I don't know that he's aware of his tail. Y you know, I obviously, he does it in such a way that it's almost, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty much like an involuntary thing. But eventually, maybe he'll understand. He'll relax. He won't be so tense. Perhaps that... That response there, I'll walk away. That tail swishing might might go away. Now, as I as I was walking away, I stepped behind him, and I could hear him just sort of lick and chew. And I wasn't even I was looking sort of soft eyes looking at his neck, but I could tell he was just licking and chewing right there. I might walk away. So it's not going to be perfect. We just want to get it better. And also, the idea that when I reach under your barrel. When I reach under his barrel, are you okay with me down there? Because <laughs> he swishes his tail quite a lot. But are you okay with me down there? Because I'll be reaching down there when we put saddles on you. Here's a good chance to walk away. Now, you might not get that tail perfect to where it's just still. That's big let, big let down there where he relaxed and settled. He might, he might swish his tail for some time. It's interesting because if he swishes his tail now when I'm brushing, if he does it when we saddle him and we girth or cinch, chances are when we're riding and we sit up and use a little leg aid, maybe he'd swish. We'll see about that. One pattern that I see people get into is for human comfort and uh, convenience, they set, they'll saddle up in the cross ties. And their horse has got its head, you know, tied up with, with the cross ties. And the horse doesn't really have a lot to, they, they can't really move that much. I mean, they can move their body. Their head, of course, doesn't move very far. And what happens is the human is unable to reinforce what they want to have happen in the cross ties. So you go and you brush your horse's flank. They kick out with their leg. 
what do you do? Most people just yell at their horse, at least the ones that use cross ties. And let's say you go to tighten up your girth so that horse feels the squeeze under its barrel, around its, around its girth area, it feels the squeeze, and then all of a sudden it bites at the cross ties. It gets stiff, its muscles get tense, it's not a good state of mind, and it bites at the cross ties. And then people don't seem to have a problem with that. But then when you go to ride your horse, you wonder why that thing doesn't really want to get off the forehand and it gets forward and it stretches out its nose every time you use your leg. So it, everything, it's in the little things. That, that's what adds up to be the big picture. All right, let's move on. There's so many things that we could use. There's so many objects and things that we could take and get our horse used to. I, I have a, the flag is, it's nice. It works well. And I just don't want people to think that we, we live with the flag in our hand all the time. It's, it's not something we live with, but it is part of a, part of my main, some of my main tools that I use with my horse. And he's seen the flag a time or two, but there's lots of different positions we could use the flag right now. I'll just present with the handle. I have other videos that you can look at to introduce your horse to the flag. I'm a little nervous on that side. I'll see if I can, wh while he's under pressure, see if we can get to that hind quarters and have him offset and cross those hind legs a little bit. Bring it under. We'll just bring this front end through a little bit, send them off, good. Good. Now I wanna think about the, the mindset that we were in when we had that curry comb. Now he sees the flag and he's thinking that it's something he should be nervous about. And I don't want him to think that because if he's nervous with the flag, he's, he'll be nervous with with me. Let's just see if we can get him to settle in for a second. Good. There we go. Good. Good. And he moved forward. I'll just keep it on him. He's flinching. He wants to, it's almost like a bug landed on his back. It's amazing where, how horses, with the muscle control that they have. Again, probably when he's flinching, an involuntary type, almost a reflex, but what's funny is when he's relaxed, he won't be in the state of mind to elicit that response. I hope that makes sense. Now, rather than getting into the, rather than, than getting into oh, the conditioned response aspect of horses and all of that type, type of you know, psychology and stuff, which is fine, it's there, but I want you to think about getting the horse to be comfortable and calm and relaxed, aware of the human. All of this is something that the horse can do and it's about them being mindful and thinking and feeling for us. And that is something that if they're in that state of mind, you're not going to have all of that twitchy, nervous behavior and responses. A little forward motion. He's got to find that hind leg. That's a good step. That's a good step. We'll switch sides. Good. Rub there. Good. And I'll just switch and bring the flag up this way. So notice he got a little nervous when I brought the flag to him. I'll stand tall, bring him forward. Notice it's by the flank. It's where your leg would be. I'll help him move out a little bit. Just making it a little bit difficult for him to stay right here. So the way I used the flag was a little pressure to say it's difficult to stay here, but if you walk forward, you'll walk off, you'll, you'll move off of that. So I want the horse's awareness first, the horse to become aware of me, and then pretty soon the mind will start to actually work for us. And it's not about desensitizing for me. It's more about mindfulness, intention, the horse becoming thoughtful of us and trying to get the job done for us before 
we get firmer. This is looking good. If you notice that I'm, when I'm moving my feet and standing tall with my hand up, that would definitely indicate to him walk. So when you notice that I'll get relaxed and bring, like right here, bring my arm down, relax my posture, that would mean halt. So here we'll stand tall and I might bring the flag up. I could bring the flag up in the air. I could bring the flag under his barrel where your leg would be. And if I, we'll bring that front end through here a little bit, a little further. Notice where I use the flag. There we go. We'll get it done. There's some tail swishing. There's some ear pinning because he's not comfortable. But if he, th if he thinks for us, if he thinks for me, it won't get to a place where he needs to, to get that way. There, it's a little change. So he trotted, and that was sort of his way to, to relax and take that excess energy and put it into something. Now we'll walk away. He'll cr offset the hind legs. He's stepping the inside hind leg under. When I turn towards him, we'll halt. Might bring that front end through just a little bit. Bring that flag up. It's getting much better, much, much better. Now I'm at the point where I'm bringing it under his chest and that's something you have to be careful doing. In fact, don't go right to the flag anyway. You can work there slowly. I don't think the flag is that big of a deal though, as some people make it out to be. Though I have imagined there's many horses that get pretty nervous about the flag and that's probably true. And then there's a lot of horses that I see that are nervous about bits and the rider. So you'll have to decide if the flag is for you. Now, just to show you, I mean, it's similar. But just to show you, it wouldn't matter if it's a flag. Here's a, here's a polo mallet. It's kind of like a little foot. I'll show you what I mean, a little leg. Now the polo mallet's different but I can take that and I can press in, come right past, come to the hind quarters, step up, step over, come across the hind quarters. Look at how I'm using that on, oh, let's step that left hind leg under. Notice how I'm using that with a little more pressure, but I'm using it where your saddle, your thigh, your knee, your leg might be getting in there with it. Look at that. No tail swish right there. That's pretty interesting. Oh, the other side I came, I came to his right side quickly. And he told me, he put his ear back with that look of skepticism. There's a big flinch. You couldn't see, but I was down by the girth. Now I'm working, I'll turn <laughs> so you can see, I'm working this area a little longer. I'm staying in there until the mental his mental awareness comes to me. So perhaps I'll get to the mental alert, aware side of the horse, more of the conscious side of the horse. And pretty soon, look at the flinching will be, go away. So although I do realize that people are training the T word, training, the reflexes of the horse. That's fine and dandy. But what about the mental component, the part that your horse can actually understand? If you get to the high buddy, if you get to that part of the horse, you won't have to be thinking so much about training and repetition and mechanics. And we'll do other videos on that as well. But notice I'm using the the little foot, the polo mallet, I'm using it m with a little more pressure pressing in there and he's looking okay with that. I mean, the, the tail's going and I don't need to get it perfect in one day. Little flinch, so I'll stay in there a little longer. Little tail movement, I'll stay in there a little bit. There, things settle down, I'll walk away. His ear was back on me, so he was a little nervous. I don't know if you heard that, but he let down right there. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. If you try to get things perfect, you'll probably never be happy. And your horse surely won't be happy with you. Be back in the picture in just a second. 
he's looking at it a little bit different. He's looking at it with a, a bit of curiosity more than he normally would. The reason being, it's a bigger saddle pad than he's had before. What's going on here? Big square pad. Interesting. He's not used to that. Take it on, take it off. In my mind, I'm thinking about him standing still. That looks great. Let's go forward. His hindquarters are in a slightly awkward position. So let's go forward and offset that right hind leg. Step the hindquarters under. And then I'll halt with that pad up on his back. Maybe. He'll find the halt in just a second. I'll just stay, stay with him. That's fine. That's just fine. Just like the flag, the curry comb, a whip. If I stand tall and lead ahead, he might walk forward. That'd be great. We want him to. We want, when I get lively, he gets lively. If I bring my life down, he'll bring his life down. Let's bring the life up and step that shoulder over, walk through, put that pad on. All right, I'll be right back. That looks pretty good. I don't have to work on that too hard or too long. Although he is looking at it up there. I notice on a lot of our YouTube videos, there's not, people are nervous to write comments and people, people don't, uh, they don't really want to necessarily do that. And when one person writes a comment, then more people write comments and don't be afraid to write a comment or ha ask a question because we'll definitely check our, check our videos for that type of thing. All right, so I did drop my rope there just to get re reorganized. Now what I have here, it's kind of funny. I have a, uh, a Western saddle with an English horse. And although he, he's not destined to be, he's smelling it, although he's not destined to be a Western horse, perhaps carrying this saddle could help him with his flinchiness and some of his sensitivity. And you notice he's swinging his head and he's looking. Now, I might just turn and try to get him so you, we can see in the picture here, on the screen. We'll turn and rub and he might smell it from behind me. And then I might just see if I can get a little movement in there without moving my feet. And then I'll just swing it, set it, let it go down. Now, you notice I'm by myself. I don't have a lot of help right now. And that's better. That's a good thing because if he's not able to do this with one person, if it takes two people, one person to hold him from the front side, maybe he's not ready for it. Same thing would be true with mounting. We'll drop our, our cinches. There we go. Helm come back to me. Settle in. It's good. It's very good. Relaxing. Now, because he's, he's, let's turn so you can see what I'm doing here. Because he's so quiet, it's nice to take our time a little bit here. And I realize that that saddle's shifting slightly, no big deal. I'll just reach up and reposition it and that's part of life, that's good. Good. See if we can bring that forehand over just a bit. Good. All right. I've got my, my cinch strap sort of ready here. You notice that I'll reach under with my left hand. That puts me more up towards his shoulder and less towards his, his hind legs. Now I will drop my rope. Everybody has slightly different techniques. This has worked for me. I've made it this far without too many issues. And this is the way I do it. Notice he's a little snorty, but I'll just lift up a little bit and It'd be nice if, if I would watch him breathe. I can see his ribs expand and contract. And if I were just gentle, I, I could look and I could probably just tighten up, snug it a little bit when he, um, when he, when he exhales. But I don't have to do it all at once. I don't have to tighten up that cinch all, all, in, one, all in one shot. Now the back cinch, cool deal. Never, I, I, would, 
I would venture to say that if I had to take a guess, he's never had a back cinch on before, being that he's a track horse. Now, <laughs> with that saddle up there, he goes, I don't want to back up with that thing behind me. But he's got to almost back up into that scary saddle, making adjustments. I'll get my rope more ready to go here, just tightening up my back cinch a little bit but it's it's still loose on them it's not it's not uh um so tight yet i don't want to scare them i don't want them to to what happens is when horses walk off then they breathe in and their rib cage rib cage fills up with air and all of a sudden they feel that girth and that cinch and they go oh where did that come from this looks pretty good bringing them to me in fact, he almost looks more relaxed with this saddle than he did without it, which I think that's a good thing. Go forward. All right. I'll tighten up my saddle in maybe three increments or three stages before I ride so that it's not all at once. And that's another thing about the cross ties. Where is your horse's mind when you're cinching or girthing your horse when you're in the cross ties? It's probably not on you back there. It's probably on the horse in front of him and the cross ties in front of him. And I see this at Barnes, and I always think that, you know, maybe people are wasting an opportunity there. All right, let's get some life going, and we'll see if we can get him moving up into a into a trot so I'll stand tall I'll bring my life up he might there we go he might feel that a little bit and keep him moving forward I'm pretty calm about this he'll settle in you could hear his breathing a little bit so at the walk, he was pretty okay with it, but then bringing him up, there's a little change. Bringing him up to a trot, well, that was a little more energy. Of course, he would breathe more, and then he'll settle in. Notice the tail's still tight, but that back cinch isn't really tight yet. It's, it's loose. That front cinch is, pretty, is fairly snug. He's got to work... Work that out a little bit. He will. He'll get. He'll look at those ears and the eyes. He's looking back at it. He's. He has to realize that that thing. I'll bring him to me here. He's got to realize that that thing. It's gonna follow him around a little bit. Now I'm gonna tighten up that front cinch a little bit more, which. And. Send him off or the other direction. We want him to just, that saddle obviously doesn't feel like a part of him yet. It will. It's not about running him fast either, cantering fast yet. It's, I'd like him to, he's offering the trot to me, but he's feeling that saddle, and that's why you see his hind legs look uneven like this he's feeling that back cinch see so when we ride him and we leg him there's a good chance that he instead of lifting his back up or going bending or going forward perhaps he gets tense braced and doesn't go forward the other reason why you saw his hind legs look a little short on one side is because he was preparing to, to canter. You can see that, see? Disunited canter right here. Let's work on that again. Now there's a lot of straps that hang. It's not just the front cinch and the back cinch. Let's get united here in the, in the canter there. I sped him up and got that hind end going. Easy buddy. <laughs> Here, he's going to bring, bring him back to the trot in just a second here. They're good. He's trying to canter there. He was ready to canter. Sometimes he gets a little balled up with it and te really tense. We want those ears to move around and rotate softly. 
those ears to sort of go to the back and to the front softly. Not just a set rigid back or set. Good. That's looking a little better, except for our disunited canter. Let's try that again. Doing a few more, doing a few more circles here until he gets united in that canter. Trying to help encourage that hind end to change here. A little more action motion. His tail's stiff. So because he's stiff, we're, we're not quite getting that, that hind lead. Let's try that again. And so we do get it. Flying change in the rear. All right, so I'm happy here. I'm happy now he's got the lead. So now let's trot. Let's bring everything down. So the reason that I was circling as much as I did there was looking for that united, looking for more of a united, um, an actual canter and not a crossfire. Now his veins are popping out a little bit, but he's going to settle in. It's good. Yeah. Help him relax and come to me, draw him in. We're going to check that saddle a little bit here. Reach up, move that saddle around a little. He's looking at it. He's really a good guy. He's really a good guy. He's legitimately, he was nervous about that saddle. We're going to take that back, cinch up a click, up a notch, see if we can back up into it. When they're just standing, they don't feel that back cinch as much as when they break and do a canter or that type of thing. Good job, buddy. He doesn't have to, he offered a trot and I just relaxed. I thought walk and sure enough, he came back. He looked at me. See like right here? Now let's think trot here. We'll get a trot going. Good. Look at him look back at that saddle. Now a Western saddle, uh, the stirrups move around a little bit, which is why it's on him. It's good. No problem. Ready to bring him to me because he's, he's, he's thinking, he's calm, he's thinking. Good. I <laughs> let him settle in. It's good. So think about this. If he could carry that Western saddle and handle that back cinch, there, there's a really good chance, if this feels like a part of him, there's a really good chance that a horse could accept your leg aids much better. Now, I realize we're not going to ride him in a Western saddle very much, but I just like to do this with some of my horses so that I know I could do it, but also let them carry that mass and that bulk and that heavier saddle. So, that's looking all right to me. Good boy. All right. He's mindful, real mindful right now. So, I guess you got to have a little bit of a show there. He's still kicking up those hind legs a little bit. Still feeling that saddle. Now there was a bit of preparation that, uh, that I've done with him with ropes around the, the barrel. I didn't get to that today. In the video. Good, looks nice, looks nice. All right, oh, lost his lead there, but I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take that. Look how free he got. Wow. Oh, let's come closer to the camera. Turn, halt. He's looking to me. Let's give him a little chance to just settle in. It's really nice. Really nice. Now that back cinch is, is, is not tight, but it's fairly, it's fairly snug. Let's see about his, his legs, a little sensitive, picking up those legs. You're a good, you're a good guy. You're a really good guy. See if I could swing that stirrup, stand tall, swing that stirrup. As, and I'm not really bumping him. In fact, it bumped the back cinch, if anything. So I swing that, I swing that, uh, that stirrup when I want to convey life and movement to him. 
That looks all right. Let's try our other side. We'll swing that stirrup. I'll, I'll stand tall. See about stepping him over a little bit. Good. And just see if he can handle that swinging stirrup. And I'll swing that stirrup now until he comes up into trot. And I'll let that go. Now I'm purposely letting it bump, sort of bump that back cinch. Which is oftentimes what happens when we use a back cinch. Horses frequently, they're just getting, when you use your leg, or some people use the spur, in a Western setup, oftentimes you'll see a back cinch nicked up and many times that's where the horse is getting, feeling it, is in that back cinch. It's not about feeling that discomfort under the belly anyway. It's about knowing what the human wants, being aware of our intention. That's looking really nice. That's looking really nice. Now, in theory, if I weren't doing a video, there'd be a, a good chance that'd be my point where I'd be getting on uh, and going for a little r ride. But I wouldn't mind, before we do that, I wouldn't mind one more canter, but we will change our direction and we will actually go to the left. St stepping back drawing him to me. Good, we'll stand tall, lead that front end through. Let's step forward. Let's see about a canter to the left here. Just uh, picked up his off lead, changed the front, didn't get the rear. Changed, got the front, got a flying change there in the rear. He, sa he thinks to himself, this is scarier when I'm cantering because this thing is chasing me. You know, there we're all um, disunited in the canter. Now the repetition here is to get him balancing better at the canter. I'm going to leave it at that to the left here. I'm going to bring my posture down. The trot will come through. Make a long I'll step way out of that center so he's not jamming around and slamming around with his hindquarters. And then we'll halt back up. Take that forehand through. The new canter. I'm curious is, uh, how he is on this right right side. Carrying, there we go. Ears came back. He had a united canter, still does. This looks good. Kind of lost that rear a little bit. Some tension in there, but not bad. There, let's trot before we lose that, that, hind, le that hind end. All right, that's quite a bit better. In fact, here where he's looking and chewing and he's really starting to free up a little more. So that's looking, looking pretty nice. Looking pretty nice. We'll have other future videos in terms of circling and, and that type of thing. But just realize that sometimes when your horse is unbalanced on a, let's just say a lunge line um, or a longer rope, then, you know, it's a chance, it's an opportunity. Now, there are situations where it might work, it might be advantageous for you to ask for a, a flying change. But it's a chance for your horse to figure out where he wants to put his feet, how he needs to get it done. And I've had quite a few horses that are, that are pretty nice. Uh, um, I get some flying changes lunging. You know, they look kind of unbalanced on the lunge line over time they develop a flying change so that because they missed their lead maybe that's an opportunity for you to to work on balance flying change or maybe even simple changes for some of you ideally I like how he's really letting down ideally I wouldn't want to have that many um, circles because what's he thinking while he's doing those circles?
but it's the way it worked out today. All right, so this will be interesting. I'm gonna just drag. Coming back into the picture here with my trusty, my trusty steed, trusty mount. I don't know, here we are. And a mounting block. Oh, I'd better wear, I'd better put my helmet on or I'll get in trouble. Making these videos, we're really trying to show you straight through, not only because we're lazy and it's less editing, but I want you to see a session all the way through with, with horses that we work with. And I'm just looking at my reins. I realize sometimes it's, uh, it's not always so interesting when I'm going back and forth, but just the way it is. All right, so to the mounting block I go. And he's not looking at the mounting block. He's, he's looking at something something maybe out the door or in the corner i'm not sure but we'll just let him find this yeah yeah he's pretty sharp pretty sharp guy he goes that's that's what you doing jack just thinking things through now i'm going to ask him to go forward here just to make sure he remembers how to bring his life up and walk forward when i bring my life up i think he wanted to stay and settle. I think he said, I, hey, I settled there. Good job, good job. We'll bring him back through here. Excellent. How are you? You're good. Now, I didn't mention in this video, I didn't mention he used to be a racehorse, but I, I don't know, some people find that interesting. I, it, you know, I think about that. I think about what is, what were his old experiences in life. That That's the significance to that to me. But other than that, I, I'm not going to do anything that different because he was a racehorse. Not, nothing, nothing drastically different, at least at this point. Although I will say, I will say, oh... I've got so many wires for the mics and things, cameras. Uh, there's one thing that I do think about, though, and that is all oh, these stirrups. I hope they're adjusted for me. It's my I use the saddle for lessons. We'll, we'll make this work. So I will say that the poor racehorses, they, they don't always have a great opinion of the, of the snaffle bit because they were taught to drive forward, push off that bit, push through the body into the hind legs. And I've watched jockeys run down home stretch and they're riding with contact while they're driving with the whip, with, the, with their crop or their bat, whatever it's called in racing, I don't know. And so the horses learn snaffle bits. They, they learn this feel that's a first resist and then maybe they give. And they were ridden with snaffle bits with a lot of stress and, and concern. So now what I want to do is just see if I can start directing him more and more, mainly on a long rein with my, with my torso, my headlight on my chest. I've got sort of this wedge shape in the ring right now that I, I have to ride in so that I can be in frame with the video but the main thing is is that he gets free and forward my first couple rides I focused more on his hindquarters but right now I'm actually feeling uh, I'm feeling great just letting him sort of go and look if I look to the right we'd like him to look to the right let's bring him up to a little bit of a trot here what I'd like to do is stand tall I like to sit up tuck the seat open leg go for a spook We'll come back around there. All right. Now, 
he's on a long, sort of a long reign, and yeah, it happens sometimes. He spooks and looks at something good. And I want to bring, well, bring his life forward, uh, bring his uh, movement forward, his attention in front. He's looking at that corner. What if I just put my hand on the down on his neck? Oh, he made it. All right, good. I'm trying to not rein him and direct him so much with his head. You'll see me pick up, direct, leave him alone, let him find it. Pick up, direct. He's on my circle here where I and then I'll leave him alone on my on my mental my mental line or arc that I'm on. I'm not just riding random. I know I have an idea of where I'm going to go, so I direct, I let him find it. Now maybe sometimes we slightly come off that point. So like, maybe he didn't make it quite into that corner yet. It's okay. We'll come back. And I'd like to come to the corner and walk. I'd like to come into here, and I'd like to find a little walk here. Here we go. I'm thinking about it. I'm changing my seat. Here's a walk. I helped with the rain a little. Let him look into that corner a little bit. I know a lot of people that ride horses, but they're, uh, and they can jump. They can maybe even hand gallop a little in a field. But I know a lot of riders that have a hard time just letting go and just putting those reins down. They have a really hard time. And when he spooked in the corner, did I pick up on the reins at all? I mean, maybe I directed his head a little bit, but for the most part, I just sort of went along with. So there is this balance between guiding, so left turn, let him find it, to direct him, and then sort of be a passenger. Now I'll direct again. We'll change our direction. Work my way towards the corner. So I'll direct him here, help him a little bit. I'm looking, focusing. My hands are way off to the side because it's a rope halter and it's what I need. Here I'm helping a little bit. I'm saying, find my, find my line. In fact, we'll come into that corner here. Now there I directed him all the way into the corner. So I had a hard time letting him just go. We got it, but I had to help him to get here. He's looking out the door. Yeah, those are jump standards. You know about those probably, or at least you will someday. Good. Smelling each one of them. He's really a curious horse. I like that. I'll, I'll sit up, tuck my seat, open leg, go forward. Here, I'm trying to just stay in the center with my hands. I'm trying to just direct a little bit and let him find it. Let's trot. Sit up, open leg. Go for a little trot here. He's carrying that western saddle, carrying me. Look at, just kind of letting him find this right turn. Here we go, straighten out. Left turn. That, that head will draw around to the left, hopefully. I know he's tall and his head's up and he thinks he, we need to get on beat. We need to get our a consistent rhythm at the trot. Need consistency here. Trot, trot, trot. Good. There you go. Change direction. Oh, he, he's thinking about that corner. Let's go in there. Yeah, that'll work. We'll come into that corner. Now, he got curious and I said, all right, you, you can go into that corner and I will go, to go back to work now. Let's sit up. But I still asked him to go into the corner. So although, here he said, he said there's another corner. Uh-huh. Heads up. Curi curious. Nice job though, buddy. Feels good. Faster trot here. How fast can you trot? Post fast, trot fast. I'll post slower in a second here to trot slower. Trying to not use that much rain. I have no idea if uh, I'm way far away as far as uh, your view of me. I don't know. Change direction here. I'm going to get get closer down that rain here a little bit. And I'd like him just to walk. And let's get soft again. And pretty soon, instead of his head being so up and out, we'll start to get him soft, softening, and get him supple. Good. And now we'll go back and see, do you remember how to step that haunch over? That looks good. Once I get it, the first ride, I work on the hindquarters a little more on a horse like this. But as I go, 
I don't need to work on that hindquarter so much. That, that was nice. Move the hindquarter as well. I want to draw him to the left. So what I'm looking for is for him to get free and start to follow my, my focus. My Where's my chest? Where, where am I looking? So pretty soon I want him to follow those, those things around. And I'm not looking for um, a lot of precision at this stage of the game. I'm looking for free movement. And I really want him to get good at trusting me and turning and turning loose. So that's really what I'm going for now at this stage in the game. But we're not that far along with him, really. And normally what I do at this point is I open up the overhead door that I have in the corner and I normally ride them out and I ride them around my property and right now we just had a ton of snow 